you know, you're an army ranger, you're a former police officer, you're a guy who works in firearms. So you are definitely the person to ask, what is your everyday carry? Um, yeah. What are your favorite firearms? Yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and also what, are... what did you carry overseas? All of that would be cool. Yeah. Well, no, that was your standard M4, your Colt M4 rifle. Um, you know, I do have a few DDs at the house now, um, you know, being there, you get a good discount. So I got a couple of their rifles that I've absolutely fell in love with, you know, I mean, it's the same platform, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's like being home. Uh, but for my everyday carry, um, just from being on the police force, I, I got a Glock 19, yeah, you know, with a, a, a red dot sight on it, you know, uh, not a full size, obviously, but enough to, you know, throw under my shirt, but that's my everyday carry, you know? Battle Line Podcast. Uh, if you've been listening to this podcast since the inception, you know the name Matt Waters because he's been on three times before. This is his fourth time on, um, and we cover a lot. This is the anniversary of 9-11. We speak about that. Um, they're building a smart home for Matt Waters, which uh, yeah. he is certainly, uh, you know, very... What's the word I'm looking for? He, he he's Thankful, the, uh, appreciative. Yeah. Um, uh, he generally <laughs> pleased. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm running deserving, out. Deserving, I think I meant. To deserving, say. He's, yeah, you. he's deserving I, of it. I because, didn't know where you were going. My yeah. thesaurus is only so big, dude. It's like uh, that big. I, yeah. You'll you'll hear though during the episode that he was reluctant to to have yeah. you know, help to to be well, helped. And and, and a, a lot of veterans. It. And I, I think he he he, you know, he comes across and he explains it very well. We all are reluctant because we always think there's somebody more deserving than than the person than us i the same thing i like we talked about it with buddy of mine said hey you you need you need to start applying for disability bro you, you have new hips you have new joints everything's falling apart and in my for me it's like well no i still have all my appendages but then you talk to matt who lost part of his leg and he still feels the same way. It's like there's somebody that's more deserving than us out there and and i'll let him say because he said it better than me but let that conversation go when you hear it. And and he made a great point that, Hey man, we're all deserving. You just stop thinking that way. Um, and, and again, we'll, we'll, you'll hear it in the episode, but Matt's always a, a plethora of information and he's got a new call sign. He's guru. Cause he yeah. really does always have words of wisdom that are that are, uh, mind blowing to me. It's like, like wow, man, that, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? So for awesome. sure. I blew up uh, your spot, I guess, um, or I burst through the bubble on last week's episode with Jake Sirock. And if you guys didn't check it out, and I let the audience know that you have finally yeah. appared on the Sean Ryan show. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Sean's nice. And it is a six-hour interview. And well, people are people are excited to hear it. Well, I and you know, I on average, it, it, he'll tell you. And and Laura over there, Laura is she was awesome. His his uh, his I don't say assistant, but manager whoever helps with the podcast runs it um she said four to six hours and for those that know me you know me man i got diary the mouth i can just talk i can it's just one of six things. six hours I, six you know if the question out. it was long it, it was <laughs> and, and guys i don't know when it's going to be i don't ask i i told I, i'm not in it. It, when it comes out it comes out it could be six months it could be two weeks um but um yeah it's the weirdest thing too because there sean comes up <laughs> It was fun. Sean and Sean is a friend. Sean's been a social media friend for a while. Him and I have never officially met. He did serve with Roan. Roan actually put him through buds um, and he served with Jack Silva and he served with Glenn. So he knew those, but, but Sean was GRS and I didn't know. He's like, he's like, do you remember me? I'm like, what do you mean? Memory. When I walked in the studio, he goes, no, I go, well, you know, we've been friends on social media. He goes, do you remember we worked together? I'm like, when? <laughs> he's like, I was GRS. I'm like what? It's like, yeah, in Cabo, we were there. He said I was a new guy. And I was like, and I was an older, I would have been on the contract for two years at that point. And I was a dick, just like I kind of am now. I was just worse than me. If you've seen 13 hours, that was me. I'm I'm kind of a dick, especially the SEALs. And I so I asked him, I go, was I a dick? <laughs> so I did because I, like, oh, I was like, holy shit, here we go. This is gonna be a great interview. Cause I did something to pit. And he goes, No, no, it's good. And we just and it was awesome because we reminisced about guys that we both knew and worked with and I didn't realize that we had worked on a contract together with the agency and, and I, I, yeah, it'll come through in the podcast when we, when eventually airs, but 
and I love, I, I can't wait to get him on our show because I, I want to get into it. There's something that, cause he, he has a despise for the agency just as much, if not more than me. And that's saying a lot. Cause I, I can't stand the agency. There's something that happened that they did something or, or maybe he just sought to a, to a fellow GRS operator. And, and it doesn't shock me that, that has driven him for that, that animosity towards the agency. And it's right. Believe me, it's, I'm sure it's well-deserved because the agency's a bunch of scumbags for the most part, at least the head shit. So I, I wanted to actually, and we didn't talk about it on his show because he's a very good interview. He's not going to get into his stuff. He wants to get in with the guest, but um, when he comes on our show and I hope we can get him, which we're trying, I believe maybe November is what yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. I, I do want to know because, um, because it, it does to me, it just validates that, that the agency and for those that are starting to people that are see it, if you follow politics at all, you see our government, they're not as on the up and up and have America's backs and veterans backs as much as you think. And here's another story. You already know mine. Well, here's another one you may not know. And it's from a very uh, well-respected, honest, good person that served his country in Afghanistan and Iraq and, and gave a lot for it and sacrificed a lot for it. And here's his story. So I'm hoping, hoping we can get into that when he comes on our podcast. And, uh, um, Cause I'd, I'd like to know, man. And, and um, so hopefully he comes on in November. He, he's always, the door's always open. I think he will. And if we do, I, I'm going to ask him that and uh, we'll see how it goes, man. Yeah, absolutely. So that's something for you guys in the audience to look forward to, but I know you're here this episode for Matt waters, who we always love having on before we get to Matt waters, uh, man, CBD has been a game changer for me. Ned is grown in Colorado. So it's the best quality CBD you're going to get. I can tell you, uh, as someone who personally, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I'm very mindful of what I put in my body. And I can tell you, unlike a lot of other things up out there, um, I don't have any negative side effects from taking any product from Ned. It's all been positive for me. Uh, and, you know, the CBD works wonders. I used to take it a bunch when I was getting off the anti-anxiety pills and the anti-depression pills for the VA. Actually, I've leveled out. So now, you know, I, now I, I don't need it as often as I did because it, it works so well. I say, Ned, congratulations, man. You're putting yourself out of business because your products work so well, but the pain really, but it's still something you could take regularly. I mean, for no, some people, do. they you take do. it every you, night. So, you, you know, you do. And if you need it and at times I did, but the other things, and that's what they branched, branched out to like the sleep aids, which is awesome to get a good night's sleep. But for me, the pain relief bomb has been a game changer, especially with all the injuries and the new hips and the, the torn ligaments. I use that every day and I love that stuff. If you guys have used Tiger Bomb, this stuff's way better for you. And it yeah. gives that same menthol feeling. And it does. It really does help with inflammation. And believe me, the last two years, I have gone through a lot of pain and inflammation. And that pain relief bombs helped me get through days. So whatever progress, CBD, sleep aid, the 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 chai, the the um the sleepy oh, uh, mellow magnesium. Mellow yeah. magnesium, thank you. That great for you. But if you're an athlete and you're out there running, get sore muscles, dude, that pain relief bomb, skip the icy hot, skip the tiger bomb, skip all that other stuff, get that, and you'll never go back to anything else. Yeah, I love their stuff. Uh, we should probably get Rhett back on the podcast at some yeah. point because he really has befriended a lot of people in the special operations community. Their products have helped a lot of guys coming back from the military, coming back from deployments. Uh, the brain blend guys uh, who yeah. need something for a traumatic brain injury. So check it all out, guys. Uh, HelloNed.com slash battle line. You'll get a great discount as a first time customer. That's H E L L O N E D dot com slash battle line. Check them out and let's get over to Matt Waters. From Kansas City to New York City, from planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Switch is on. Mother I'm going to shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dating for a long time. 
You are now tuned into the Battle Line Podcast. The switch is on Battle Line Podcast and uh, we were actually saying this before we hit the record button, but if you guys have been listening to this show since the beginning, Matt Waters, Army Ranger, uh, retired police officer, retired, yeah. has been a mainstay of this show and has been on for all the inceptions of this show when it was just audio, when the video quality, video quality kind of sucked. Now I think we're pretty good. And uh, you're the only person to appear on this show four times. You've been on <laughs> 39, 130, 195, and now episode 256 and it's always great to have you on you know what uh i think you guys need to change it so it's battle line podcast and then parentheses and matt and matt. Matt. i know we need to have matt as as like when i can't show up he's the fill-in dude who's will who's will cow's filling will cow always had a fill not and don't say jonathan gillum because we do not care we do not compare <laughs> matt waters to jonathan gillum we don't do that but who he's be, one of them. He's one of yeah, them. You shut your whore mouth. You just don't ever call. <laughs> you said the name. <laughs> well, because I, I didn't want you to go. I'm trying to stop it. We just fucked it all up. All right. We're, whatever. No, no, we, no, no, there's no we. That was you. That well, <laughs> I, I thought this was a we podcast. Now it's Tonto's pot. No, no, no. no Truth wait, be told, it's funny. Line, it's you, and then it's it was, not we. And there was most Matt's of the uh, most of Matt's villains for well you, Matt. It's all... your fault, dude. Most of the villains for Will Cow are all women, and that's like from the top. They're really weird. About, you know, it's you know, you really? probably blame it on DEI type stuff that the people at the top are like, we only want women filling in for you. Like, that's that's truth. That's the truth. I don't work there anymore, so I could say that. You know, like there were really very good hosts who wanted to fill in for Andrew, um, like Dan Bongino and Buck Sexton, and yeah. the company, uh, one woman in particular, pretty much told them to fuck off because they weren't women. So, oh, so they just went through the other routes and they blew up on their own. Great job, whoever made that yeah. decision. And Wonderful these people would have been decision. great. Like Dan Bongino is, yeah, like he's, he's whether huge. you're a fan of him or not, he's huge. He's huge. He, and he would have filled in for Will Cow for peanuts. And they were like, nah, you're not a woman. You're not a woman. Yeah, and, and Buck, I mean, Buck, because I'm, I'm, I started going to Buck's show when he first started. And, and he's, you know, he's huge. Buck's, Buck's a very oh, yeah. well known person in the, in the conservative arena and in the political arena. And he's Brooks, nicest guy in the world, too. Buck's awesome. Yeah, so he why, is. why don't so we have I'm Buck on? Do we have, to have Matt on? Let's just call Buck. Buck, come on, Matt. We're gonna call. I'm, I'm, I'm completely Go blowing up the spot of uh, Sirius XM there, but I, like I said, I really don't care. Even though we're on the app, we're on the Sirius XM app. Check us out there. Um, hey, so the reason we're having Matt Waters on, there actually is an important reason with mm -hmm. um, the charity that you're doing that really that that's being done for you in building a smart home. Before we get into any of that, though, I think the first thing that, that would be appropriate to get into is that this episode is going to go up on September 10th. So this is a very important anniversary of both 9-11s, let's yeah. say. And I mean, it's it's something greatly impacted both of your lives. Uh, I, I've told my story before, but I'll really briefly tell it as the civilian here and then hand it over to you guys. But 9-11-2001. Um, I went to school in Manhattan High School, and oddly enough, there's nowhere else in that school where you'd be able to see um, smoke from the towers. I was at the highest point of the high school. It's like a tower, um, and we were able to see the smoke from the towers. Every single one of those guys I hung out with in that class, I still talk to to this day. Like, there's one text thread that I is a constant in my life, and it's those guys. We all happen to experience 9-11 together. One of them did go on and join the army, my friend TJ Bova, uh, who's now a um a range um what's the what's the word again? A range officer okay. at, at a range in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh he's not he doesn't have one of those stories though that's like I saw the towers go down and then I decided to join the army. I've known TJ since probably third grade, and he always wanted to join the army. So long before 9-11, he said, I'm gonna join the army, mm -hmm. and he did it. Um you know, one of um, our family friends was unfortunately um, we lost in that tower. Chris Quackenbush, great guy who worked in finance, just like many of the other people uh, who died on 9-11. And actually where I'm from, Manhasset, I think I believe we had the most deaths of any town uh, in New York. I think there may be others in, in, on the, uh, in New Jersey, because truthfully, it's a nice town. So many people in that town 
they live here in the suburbs and then they commute to the city every day for their finance jobs or other jobs of that sort. And, you know, their, their life, I've said it on the show before, but it was not Islamic terrorism or any of that. They were just people working finance, regular people and uh, their families lives were forever changed on that day. Uh, something I'll certainly never forget. I, I, I do feel blessed that I got to at least experience America pre nine 11 before when you could go to a concert and not get patted down, go to a baseball game and not go through a metal detector, go to the airport and not take your shoes off. Uh, kids today will never experience that. The three of us did. Um, but yet for you guys, you, you went on to combat because of what happened on the events on that day. So um, yeah, we, we'll talk 9-11-2012 as well. But I don't know, Matt, if you want to give your uh, account of what you remember and, and the, the impact of 9-11 on you. Yeah, well, um, we were actually, let's see, we were training in Germany <clears throat> uh, when 9-11 uh, happened. You know, somebody came running in and said, you know, planes have hit the towers in New York, this, that, and the other. And, you know, just like uh, in in school, you know, somebody wheels in one of those uh, uh, stands with a TV on it, you know, like movie day yeah. in high school or whatever. And <laughs> yeah, we just sat around the TV for the next couple hours. Um, but that didn't stop us from you know, going out and training, we're actually going into what we call the box. So it was, you know, the throwing on miles gear and blank rounds and all that. And, you know, we all knew right where we were at and we're like, man, we're on the stepping stone, ready to jump over to, uh, you know, wherever, wherever the problems are at, send us. And we're like, nope. Keep zeroing your miles gear. You're going into the box still. And it was like, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, that was, that was not a good day. And in fact, I remember a couple, uh, op four guys got tuned up because, Somebody was, you know, there were some oh, yeah. bad attitudes, you know, feeling like uh, we should go over there. But yeah, that's we were in Germany when it happened. We weren't even home. What were I, I do because I I had just left and for actually for green to gold when you guys went to Germany because that's when that's when the Herminator burned in right. That's when he burned in on a jump and did he hurt destroyed his back? Was it that Germany trip? Because I remember you guys going and I left and and um you guys had gotten you had Lieutenant Taylor. Is that right? Your platoon leader? Yes, it the, was. The, the I believe it was at that time. Yeah, I yeah. mean, fucking rock star. Rock star yeah. lieutenant. You had Thies. Platoon sergeant was Thies. So you guys had a really had an A-team, a stellar A-team as your platoon sergeant and, and lieutenant. Did at that? Do you think the headshed knew something was happening? Is that why? Or was or was Germany? Or was I, And I was so, but I had, you know, I was a tab spec four. I had, I yeah. didn't hold any rank and yeah i think you just got your five or you had your five for a while but do you think yeah, there, so that was, was a September, i think i've been a five for five months i think so, so you think it was just a coincidence or because some i mean they know and, and there are times that okay we're getting ready for something and but it's training we're going to train but they're they're, yeah. they're prepping you for for uh, no, i don't prepping. think so just because uh we had been to germany was it yeah it was 98 we went in 98 and then we went again in 01. And I mean, they've got to schedule those trainings out so far, you know, it's to true. do that. So I, I don't think that was, there was no way that was on the radar of, you know, the, the higher ups. What, what did they tell you, man, when it did happen, they brought the TV in. What did Thies and, and I don't remember who the CEO was, Harmon, was it Captain Harmon that was the CEO at the time? I know, uh, Kephart had just left or Kephart was leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did they have any words of wisdom to you? I mean, or was it just a business as usual guys just keep, keep going. I'm bad about that. You know, it's uh, I think it was just, Hey, yeah. Business as usual. You're still yeah. training. You're still going into the box. So <laughs> you're yeah. still, you're still sucking, put the mile yeah. shit on it. Oh, that stuff is um, when you got back, you know, and yeah, I, I've, we've never asked you this and I always wanted to ask you because I did. I, 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 I wanted, I actually tried to get out of my contract and my green to gold. And I went to my lieutenant, uh, lieutenant colonel and said, Hey, I need out. I need to go back to battalion. And mm -hmm. he was I asked for the civilians that they're, they're going to say green to gold. What the hell I'm sorry. It, it's <laughs> when you become an officer. It's, it's if you have a, you get, you go to get your commission, you can go to officer candidate school, or you can do what they call green to gold, where you go back to an ROTC program and you can obtain a degree while you're getting, while you're getting uh, your commission. And so, sorry guys, that's what green to gold means. But okay. I remember I went to Lieutenant Colonel Worthman. He was a former night stalker. And so he understood he was our, he was our battalion commander there at Creighton. And I go, I'm out. I, I got to go back. Sure. He goes, 
and he was he knows from range of time so he knew he didn't have to be politically correct me he goes fuck you dude if you're if we need officers where we need rangers if you bounce and you go he says you're going to the needs of the army and i was like well this sucked and i, I just always wanted to know because i i did miss that you know what was the feeling i like in the in the well, in, in the pipe hidden, the pipe hidden unions, the E4s, the E5s, you know, Wheeler was there. He was, was he your squad leader at that time? Because Wheeler's a freaking um, stud, man. No, it was uh, Duffy. Du oh, well, there's another stud. I mean, shit. Yeah. Just like I said, rock stars. What yeah. was, what was that like in the squad room, man? I mean, and, and because uh, I, I can just imagine guys were, yeah, like you said, bouncing off the walls, tuning up an op four. I, I see that, but. Kind of explain that for the world, if you can, so you understand the intensity and and also the disappointment, but then also having oh, to yeah. stay locked in because you're going to go eventually. You guys know that you're going eventually. Yeah, but, but we wanted to be first. You yeah, know you. I mean? <laughs> okay. Well, We're yeah, like, I, let's go now. Um, so, I, I mean, yeah, we still went and trained just like we normally do, just as hard and you know, uh, just as focused. But yeah, there was this cloud. Uh, I I remember specifically feeling disappointment. Yeah. You know, because you're like this is what we do and somebody else is going or we don't get to go yet. Like, you know, how many times have we trained wheels up in 18 hours? I know we're in the world in 18 hours. And you're like, well, we're here in the world. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You know? um, but that's also, I mean, there's, there's bigger pieces of that pie. Like, you know, um, obviously I think we were on at the time, what was that RF three? Cause that was for block leave and Oak yeah. training. So it wasn't our time in the chamber, you know, it would have been first or third, you know, whoever was on RF1. Um, and probably that's exactly what happened, you know. And then, of course, we just drew the short stick being uh, um, deployed, you know, for training at the moment. You're not ready to go, but that's why you have three battalions that are in different, you know, states yeah. of readiness. So, but yeah, for us, it's just, okay, yeah, we understand we're going to go train. We did exactly what we're supposed to be doing and training, you know. And, uh, but yeah, it was just this, we know we're going to probably go at some point, but we're all disappointed because we just saw America get a big black eye. And uh, yeah. here we are like, go, go, go train with blanks. You're just like, dude. <laughs> so, and that's, uh, that's, that's miserable on a good day. Just doing oh, yeah. miles and doing. Uh, how Chris, I was, I was just going to ask, yeah. cause you probably, I'm sure you've said it on the show before, but yeah. people are probably interested as well, since we're kind of recapping it all. Uh, your reaction like on the day of 9 11 yeah where, where well, you were how it impacted I, I, you. I remember i was i was i was walking to class i because i was doing green to gold so i had i had class that morning and i was walking to my class creighton in university of nebraska and omaha their rtc programs for the army were combined so some of our classes were at uno some were at creighton and that class that morning was at uno and a guy ran by me just a random student he goes we were attacked and me i'm just what <laughs> what do you mean we're attacked and he goes the towers got hit and i just i didn't really know what he meant by the towers he didn't explain himself very well he's he's shitting himself and <laughs> and i'm like okay well it's this is college i guess that's how it is and i saw the team and then when i saw it that's when i finished my class because i had to go to class and that's when i went right back to lieutenant colonel worthman and i said i need out now I need to go back to battalion because I, I could I just could picture myself watching it. And it happened watching Rangers on TV jumping in to Afghanistan or Iraq. And I just I go, I know I'm going to see that. I'm, and that's what happened. Uh, I don't think it was I don't know when the first jump it was on TV. It was I don't know which battalion it was, but it, there was an airborne jump to season airfield. And uh, I want to say it was Afghanistan. I, I can't I, I, I want to say that's what it was. Is that objective rhino? Was that Rhino? Yeah, yeah. And it was, was, was it, it, it was one, of, it was the first one. It was, and of course, Fox and CNN had just snippets of the guys going out the door, but it wasn't the actual jump. They're showing an actual, you know, a training jump, but they're right, right, right. Hey, Rangers jump into, and that's what happened. And here I am. So he's disappointed that he didn't go. I'm disappointed going, fuck, I, I missed my, you know, I, I missed my war. I, I missed the war. I did. That's, I mean, we all have that fear. Everybody has yeah. that fear that serves like, and and it's when there's a war and you don't go, if there's no war and it's peace sign, well, that's just how it is. I mean, there's right. just, but there's just, but it's like, I miss, I missed my fucking war. I missed. Yeah. Well, uh, on that note, uh, that was a piece I forgot. Um, I was through, no. Yeah. Three or four months. I was supposed to get out in January of 02. So I was three or four months from getting out when that happened. So right. uh, I actually reenlisted. I didn't know that. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were you were 
and did two year, three year enlistment? I, what or did you have a choice? Did you did they did they hammer you like we got this guy? <laughs> He's gonna no. sign up for whatever. No, I just did. I think two years. Two year, and um, well, you came back, but and that's what I was when you came back. How long was it till till second bat or at least second Bravo Company did go, did deploy after the nine eleven two thousand one? Uh, of O two. So it was a year. You guys sat there for a year. I mean, not sat there. No, 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 no. I mean, you're talking what? October, November, December, oh. January, February, March. Six months. Six months. That's yeah. still, man. That's still a lot. But you're right. There's other battalions, right. and they, and they man. So what kind of train were you guys getting? Just normal training? Did you go through normal bilats? Were you doing specific training for their prepping you for a specific objective? And you don't need to get into the, any of the classified stuff. But it's just really yeah. for me. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> so long, like. It's not classified anymore. anymore. I don't think. So, That's I mean, true. That's true. <laughs> on that note, I was looking at uh, I was looking at a photo the other day or a couple months ago, and I'm looking at uh, I mean, shoot, it might have been a year or two ago. I'm looking at a photo of a guy's rifle. Some dude, you know, in in Africa, or I think it was Africa, and you know, he's got his helmet on, you know, kind of this way, and he's got his his M4, his M16, and I look on his rifle, and I'm like, dude, that's a Peck too. Like, that's what. That's what I used to use, and that was cutting edge. And now these third world country guys have. I know. It, so. Wow. Oh, I think shit. by this time, nothing's much as classified anymore. That's when I'm right. You're, all so, you're so right, man. <laughs> like, holy shit, that was that pack. Those were those were the thing, man. And now yeah. I, that is so freaking. So, well, we probably we probably, we probably think, sold it to him. I mean, I think I remember more about the uh, Iraq spin up than I do Afghanistan because I remember going to uh, Fort Bliss, Texas. And yeah. doing, um, you know, because that, that is a forsaken spot in the United States. I mean, it's yeah, beautiful. It's in, in its own right. But, I mean, it's very deserty, you know. So that was us spinning up for Iraq. And I remember us, you know, hitting or talking about mock-ups of um, Scud missiles, you know, this, that, and the other. And that was our one of our spin-up train-up missions for Iraq. But, honestly... You know, I don't remember much about the spin-up for Afghanistan. I just remember going, you know, and now I'm at the point where I look through my photo albums and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this. Or I remember doing that. And that's when, you know, stuff comes flooding back. Good memories come flooding yeah, yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but yeah, man, I don't remember much about the spin-up for Afghanistan at all. I mean, well, I, 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 go ahead. And then it's safe to say, though, because um, I just want to make sure we hit this too, 11 years after that day, 9-11-2012, um, so I was also wondering for you, Chris, I, I feel like for the years that followed 9, 9, 11, 2012, after the book specifically, it was a lot of the times that you like, you had major events to do every 9, 11 and a yeah, like the past couple kind of, of years. Kind of been, su I've been laying low because they, 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 they were too just, hard to do. I didn't like doing them on 9, 11. They were very difficult to do. Yeah, so how does it feel, you know, 12 years later for you, man? It honestly, it. I, I older guy and I Matt I don't know if you've had this with your feelings too but I, I older guys guys that I knew that I met from Vietnam and then even the old Korea guys they would they would always say that the days get it gets more difficult actually to me they they were and I didn't believe them I'm like well it's you know it has time heals all wounds but they're right they're they really are I I, I I'll be I, I'm I feel it I I just get different about two weeks two to three weeks before like i i mean i'm okay on the right show, now but, as we're recording really yeah, yeah it is it's i i i'm i am i'm i'm a little bit more i, I get more emotional it's like i'm pms oh, yeah. <laughs> dude i mean it's like, like something well like a song or or like i said i watched fury last night and <laughs> those guys standing by the tank and getting ready you know hey we're with that reminded me of when roan was with us and say, hey, you, none of you have to stay here. And when, you know, Brad Pitt's at the tank at the very end where he's like, you guys go. And they all decide to stay with him and it cost them except for the one guy there. Well, it, I wasn't watching Fury anymore. I went back to where Ron is standing with us going, hey, none of, you, none of you guys have to go, man. I'm going, but you don't have to come with me. And we're all like, yeah, whatever. We're going. And I obviously, I broke down. I, I out of nowhere. It's just like, whoa. Okay, mm -hmm. that was that was weird. And I don't know, Matt, if you have those same, not necessarily a 9-11, but I do want to ask you about that. But if if the instance that you've gone through 
especially the traumatic one, like you know, the and specifically, you know, where you got you got attacked, you got hit, your leg came mm-hmm. off. It was massive, you know, it was, it was and it was a pretty big operation you guys were doing. Do you get that yeah. same way? I mean, I, I now I'm fine after after 9 11 goes in 2012. I I kind of come back to normal where yeah, I still remember, but little things don't get as emotional for me. I don't get it. I don't I'm not that quick to remember something or a smell. I how do you how are you? Or is that go happen with you? Or are you have you been able to has it gotten easier as time's gone on, I guess I should say? Yes and no. I mean, it depends on what's going on, you know, because my anniversary is uh June eleventh when I got blown up. And uh, honestly, this year was a tough year. I had a difficult, not a super difficult time, but I definitely hit a rough patch. Yeah. Um, I was uh, at work and I had two of my buddies pull me aside because I just been, I'd been in a funk this year. And for me this year, it was extra because um, I was having problems with my leg. In fact, I just had surgery uh, July 30th again. And today is the first day I've tried wearing my leg all day. Um, and I took it really easy, you know, was using my crutches and I got a knee scooter at work, which I haul ass around the office on and about take people out. But, uh, <laughs> that's, you gotta do it, man. That's awesome. Uh, you, you gotta have fun with it, man. Yeah. Um, so normally, yeah, there's about my same, about a two week period where I'm just, I'm just like, Bleh, you know, um, I that's try not to be in a funk, but I get in a funk. And then this year, May 20th was the last day that I was on my leg uh, this year. And um, so I'd been on my crutches and it's really difficult for me to go from my crutches from, you know, being able bodied, being on my leg, you know, walking around doing everything everyone else does to suddenly being handicapped again. Um, That is a tough pill to swallow. And I do good for about three to five days. And then I hit a wall uh, where it's just, I really start struggling being handicapped again, being on my crutches. So, you know, I'm in that whole mood and then June 11th rolls around and I was just like, you know, mentally, I I wasn't done, but I was just like, you know, um, not in a good spot. You're just just almost, almost zombie. I am. I'm almost zombie. Like, I mean, I'll get that emotion and then it'll be done. And then I'm just leave me alone, guys. I just, I'm I'm just a zombie. Leave me in my bubble, um, which I always try to other folks that are wounded. I really try to preach against that. You know, don't get in your bubble because yeah, that's when the family problems start. You know, you're you're ignoring your family, your kids, your wife, you know, your friends, and it's just like as much as it sucks, you need to be not doing that. You need to be still approachable, still going out there, and you know, paying attention to your wife and your kids. You know, because um, that's just doubling down on on the negative. No, you're right. You're, you're exactly right. Um, Exactly. But, but yeah, I had two of my buddies pull me aside at work because if I'm being completely honest, I wasn't performing well. And they're like, hey, you kind of need to tighten up. And I told them what was going on. And, you know, uh, we're both, uh, you know, all three of us were in this room and my voice just started going, Ugh, you know, started <laughs> quivering and, you know, I could feel it coming up. And I'm like, don't do it. But <laughs> they could tell, you know, and they're two really good dudes. One of them's, uh, he's a veteran. He was a, uh, well, they're both veterans. Um One guy, you know, much to his chagrin, didn't get to, you know, go to the big show, but the other guy did, and he was a Kiowa pilot. Oh, wow. Uh, Really badass dude. Yeah. And uh, having them, having folks like that being able to like, hey, come here, what's your malfunction, you know, in a a good way, you know, and let's get you right. So, yeah, this year, this year was tough just for being off my leg. Um, I I told him, I was like, hey, uh, this sounds weird but I hate being handicapped. And when I'm on my leg, I don't consider myself handicapped. Yeah. When I'm on those crutches, you yeah. know, it's, um, you can't get a cup of coffee. Guys, it, and, to, and to take it, just to take, just to do normal. And maybe, you know, speak it, maybe cause you know, I just had my hip redone. I mean, I'm still healing from this and I was on a walker again. I was just on a walker mm-hmm. a year and a half ago for my freaking quad. And now I'm, a, I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, thinking holy crap well maybe that's why it was harder this year because mm-hmm. i i i'm i haven't been able to run you know for yeah. almost two years now almost a year and a half the hips now it's getting better but i, I don't know i'm having an epiphany i'm actually thinking out loud like, oh, maybe that's Makes why sense. it's been a little bit more because I, I it sucks and just not being able to shit dude not being able to sit down on the toilet and like normal or worry something's i mean just you're right. The, uh, the, the I'm, little... I'm laughing at you because I had that thought today because today was my 
you know, first day back wearing uh, my prosthetic. And yeah, you go to the bathroom and you're like, and I was like, I was thinking to myself, you know how nice it is <laughs> to not have one of my pant legs being drug all the way exactly. across the ground right now? Exactly. Man, is that, or like trying like, okay, I got to move one side down so I can get the other yeah. leg straight. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I, it's, it's, things like that are magnified it is. when events like what you and I have been through or anybody that's been through a traumatic event those little things are magnified and and yeah. I guess that's what I'm getting at and I'm just realizing it myself like holy shit because it has been a little bit harder this year yeah. um but it it seems to me like it has gotten harder every year as I get closer to it when it's away it's easier but when I get close to that day mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be antisocial it's just I just I I don't know if I really want to be left alone either because I just did a speaking event last week and then was on on a Sean Ryan's show. So I was like, I'm oh my, which I, 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 I kind of burst the bubble if people don't know if they haven't listened to the last week's episode with um Jake from Mantis. I in the intro I told oh, them yeah. that yeah, that you did Sean Ryan show, hey. which you already said, but what I did tell him is it, I was like, it's a six hour interview, which I've hey, never we, done we, in we, my we, life. Uh, I've done podcasting now for like eight years. Yeah, six hours. Well, Gee, and maybe bro. that's that's what I needed. I mean, I was exhausted, but maybe that's what I needed. It was more like almost talking to a therapist than it was an interview. So thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, but I I, I remember today it, I do get more emotional, but I also want to watch the movie. I want to read. I'll read the book again. I'll read our book and I'll remember. I'll look at the pictures. I, and then I'm going to kick myself like, how do I not have an, more pictures? And I don't. And then I will I'll watch the movie again and it'll hurt, but it's like, I have to, I have to, I have to remember, even though it's, it brings a lot of, uh, uh, it brings a lot of great memories back. Of course right. it does, but it brings a lot of, a lot of pain back too. And, and, um, Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this episode with Matt Waters. We actually do talk some firearms because Matt Waters is not only an army ranger, a guy who served several years as a law enforcement officer, he is a firearms enthusiast. So uh, we talk a little bit about that and we do talk about Fort Scott Munitions actually at one point. Yeah. So FSM is a manufacturer of multi-federal patented solid copper and brass CNC spun ammunition. It's designed to tumble upon impact in soft tissue, leaving devastating wound channels for faster bleed out and quicker incapacitation. This ammunition was originally developed to innovate and improve on the standard military grade ammunition design. It was found that not only did the TUI ammunition outperform competitors in the self-defense industry, but it quickly became apparent that it would be a top contender for hunters alike. With the ammunition being CNC spun, the tolerances are some of the tightest on the market, ensuring that it receive the same results with each pull of the trigger. Fort Scott Munitions is available throughout privately owned businesses in all 50 states, but you'll get the best deal through us yeah. when you go to fsm.com and you use the promo code BATTLELINE. That's fsm.com, promo code BATTLELINE for 15% off your order. Only available to listeners of the BATTLELINE podcast. FSM is a proud supporter of Chris Peranto, BATTLELINE Tactical, and the BATTLELINE podcast. They've been with us since the very beginning. We appreciate all that yeah. they do. So support them, support the podcast. And with that, let's get right back to Matt Waters. Yeah, so well, this I, is I, an interesting thing I wanted to get to too, because I, I I do want to get into what what we're what they're doing for you uh, specifically, uh, Matt. But since we're talking about 2012, uh, 9 11 with the anniversary, it's an interesting thing because I met Chris following uh, the events of 9 11. You guys I knew each other for years before. Oh well, yeah, right? I got yeah, a so. I got a I got a picture of him. He used to they he was a nice tab spec for. It. I mean he he still smoked this up, but he he did it. You could tell the dickheads that were just being freaking assholes and then it's the spec for is that <laughs> okay we got to do this to you guys because it happened to us but we're, we're we're really here to help you and and he he him and bach specialist bach who what's he probably now a damn sergeant major i, I mean uh, that dude's that dude's a lifer I think he just retired yeah that freaker that you could i could see that from a mile away that dude was a lifer when i when i but so I, matt what was uh what was yeah. your reaction on 9 11 2012 because uh, i yeah. can tell you I met Glenn Doherty extremely briefly at Sirius XM, as weird as it is, because it's like I didn't work with the guy. I didn't, you know, he was just a Navy SEAL who happened to know another Navy SEAL and came by right. to do Andrew Wilkow. I shook his hand and everything. Um, uh, literally, maybe a couple of weeks after that, Andrew Wilkow gets a text, hey, Glenn is dead. 
And I, I, honestly, Andrew thought they were talking about Glenn Beck or something because he worked for Glenn Beck at the time. He's like, Glenn. And then, no, Glenn Doherty. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure you knew that Chris was there. I don't know if you knew any of the other guys. Uh, no, but... no, I, but I, I had. Oh, you didn't? I, okay. I had, so uh, when, so when yeah, I... what was your reaction then? 9 11, yeah. 2012, Benghazi attack? I, uh, yeah. I, nobody. Uh, yeah, nobody knew that I worked for the I, no. I all contact. I was completely covert yeah, clandestine. Lost. No, nobody knew shit unless you worked with me as a contractor. Right. But yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask that same question, dude. What what were where were you at? What were you doing? And when you saw it, what was your reaction, man? Well, again, uh, I'm bad about this stuff. Uh I don't remember exactly, but I know what I was doing at the time. And I was working for Tacoma PD and I was a school cop at the time. Um oh, wow. That's all and right, I remember it happening. You know, I don't remember specifically the day or where I was at, that type of thing. Um, in fact, I couldn't even tell you if it was a weekend or not. Um, but, uh, you know, I just remember thinking, holy shit, here we go. You know, I mean, not knowing that Chris is over there, I, I not to downplay it, but you're like, here we go. Another world yeah. incident, you know, I, I feel um, you. and I didn't find I didn't find out you were there till years later, actually. So uh, when did when did you find out that Chris was one of the wait, guys? Wait, did wait. you wait until the book came out, or was it prior to that? And that's how most guys are. <laughs> most guys are like most guys are like, and that's I I wouldn't. Most guys are like I didn't even know till I saw a picture or the movie came out, and then there's the credits at the end, and they're like, "Holy shit, I know." <laughs> well, the movie, yeah, no, the movie, because the movie was uh, what there, a year after the book. I know, but so I but would that's think. what I'm saying. There's a lot of there's people that didn't have a clue that's right. crazy to me because as was, someone who met you at the time of the book you were all over fox news you were you guys were all so i i it's hard for me to believe people wouldn't know that knew you until the movie came out but was it the book matt or like when was it that you realized that a good friend of yours uh was there again uh, i'm horrible with this stuff that's I'm, crazy I'm, okay yeah, uh, so I mean, I'll a good when, he's like, memory <laughs> it's like, I'll he's tell you totally, when I met, totally when validating I met, my fucking existence <laughs> in his life. Right, right but when, I, when I met Chris, I could tell you that um, it it was like it was I mean, I met so many people at Sirius XM, but it really was actually like uh, meeting a rock star or something. But, but truly because of the fact that for Will Cow and like Bins, the other producer, like we spent a, a couple years really covering Benghazi hard. And I, I really hated the way that the mainstream media covered it, not even knowing mm -hmm. these guys. Um, you know, I, I just remember how, how poorly uh, it was. I do remember the original blaming of it on a YouTube video. Um, and then that guy being sent to prison and like the crazy reaction of it. So yeah, it was, it was really, uh, I remember just meeting you and be like, Holy shit. This is one of the guys who was actually there. So, um, is that yeah, when we did the picture it, with the freaking Nerf guns? In no, the, that was in probably the, the second or third time second, you okay. came in because the uh, first time you came in, I'm sure he just shook your hand and was like, Oh, it's an honor to meet you, which it truly was. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's great to reflect on this all these years later, as horrible as an incident as it was. It's important that people don't forget. Um, and and also to keep learning why we, why we were there, which why were we there? You know, it's it's kind of I think I tweeted it to you a while back, but like. There's a lot of accounts who, and I don't know if this, you know, would be considered propaganda, but tweet about like, at, at least according to them, like all the great things Gaddafi did for Libya and the idea that like he wanted every Libyan to own a home and that he was having his own bank and like th that there's no reason America should have been involved. No, there there. Was, I don't know if you would go that, that far to say he was a great leader. I know a lot of Africans do consider him a great leader or did consider him a great leader, but. Brother, that's not propaganda. That's God honest truth. There's no reason we were there to. To stabilize the region that was an obama foreign policy man that's a valerie jared that's muslim brotherhood we got to back them they're going to stabilize the region we're going to put them in power and and like any other country we've been into we always go for minerals it doesn't matter who it is and for them to say we're not going for minerals we're not going for oil we're not going for the gold we're not going for the weapons bullshit which we all, it don't matter which president's in power that's part of anything we go into in a country but i dude in the way gaddafi died which is not talked about and i mean no, they drug him out. Not, of a, they drug him out of a pipe, a a, a, a a irrigation pipe, and fucking sodomized him with with a fucking AK forty sevens. That's 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 the Muslim extremist way, man. I Matt, yeah. can you validate yeah. that for me? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and on that note, where you know you just you hear something like that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Or the, you know. Yeah. The same thing, like you know, we're all laughing, and Chris, you're like, oh, you don't remember me, you know, for shit. And it's like, <laughs> no, it's because the caliber of people that 
we trained with and worked yeah. with. And then you hear something bad going on in the world. And then I know exactly how I probably would have reacted to that. And someone said, hey, Peranto was there. And you're like, okay, and? <laughs> That's ex- but that's and that's why I'm laughing because that's that's normal. I mean, that's, that's, what, like- that's what we do, or you know, the, not me, but that's what folks do in our community. They go to where the trouble's at, and then when there's trouble, guys are like, "Yeah, and what happened? Okay, cool. That's <laughs> that's what we do." <laughs> it, 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 that's it, 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 the laughter, and it now because Ian, Ian and uh, Ian and I, and Ian seen me do it where I I laugh at the most impromptu times. <laughs> oh, I yeah. do, and he's like, "Dude, why are you laughing?" I was like, <laughs> "I don't. I just reminded me of something that we did downrange that was funny, or some other guy did. You know, like even with your you talk about your leg blown off. Watch that episode, guys. See how many times I laugh when Matt's oh, yeah. talking about. I mean, it's like because it's I don't know. Maybe it's a defense mechanism. I think that's probably a big big thing, but. It's it's because it well that's that yeah that's, that's you know what we it's, do. And, and I know he can get through it and he's I knew he was yeah. fighting his ass off and it's like shit well he get up Ranger we gotta yeah. keep fighting hey I mean, Chris was involved in this great big firefight and you're like that's really cool I'm gonna finish my cup of coffee now <laughs> you know it's, it's so it's, true man it's not sh- I mean it yes it's shocking it was a horrible thing you know but to us it's just like that's a Tuesday that's the- because that's that's what you sign up for and i i think getting going into that that's why i tell young kids i I know we're going different route now but i i I think it goes this way we need to i didn't want to ask you this so do young kids and they do ask me about joining the army and and specifically the rangers when they have asked you i mean what do you tell them because i tell them that sort of thing i'm like hey just get ready for the norm for just to be the normal thing to 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 possibly see people die to may have to take a life to be just be miserable yeah. some days that's just how it is to uh what do you tell them man because I, I wish somebody would have told me that but nobody did i had to listened? figure out for myself yeah would you have listened no but i still <laughs> wish i wish i could at least say somebody told me <laughs> it's so funny shut but, up sergeant you this fucking wife Chris I say that like, oh okay now i see <laughs> No, so, you know what I I will say observing you guys and doing <laughs> these shows for so long I think if you have the personality that this is what you really want to do with your life you're going to do it. Um I remember interviewing Mike Ritland prior to doing this show and he talked about how he was inspired by guys like Dick Marcinko and he went to a Dick Marcinko book, book signing and he's like Dick Marcinko barely looked at me and I was like, Hey man, I loved your book. It, it inspired me. I'm going to join the seals. And Dick Marcinko like barely lifted his head and he was like, yeah, you'll never make it. And just, and, and it didn't, it didn't phase him. He still joined, you know, he probably thought he was a dick or something, but you know, um, I I've heard like, actually when I worked with Jack Murphy he spoke about this there and we've had guys on the show, even or civilians who were like, well, I really wanted to join, but my parents talked me out of it. And he's like, fuck you man like if you wanted to join you would have joined and that's why i actually don't like when we have and it's been happening maybe once or twice when we have civilians on i really thought of joining like who cares there's there's no prize for like thinking of joining and and, yeah. and i do think if you have the personality type that you really want to be an army ranger and you have the skill set to be an army ranger you're going to do it regardless of your friends family other naysayers tell you not to yeah i mean i, I tell I do get that question every now and then, you know, um, about, Hey, I'm thinking about joining. Should I, what's, you know, what's it like this, that, and the other. And I was like, one, you know, if you go the route I did and Chris did, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, it however, is. you know, um, have a solid plan B cause you can't do it forever, you know? Um, and yes, as, as cool and as fun as it is, don't make that the only thing you do have hobbies. Cause it's, it's a fun fun job um but it's not healthy you know right. what's healthy is being a well-rounded individual and going out and hey this is work i'm really good at work but i skydive or i ride uh, mountain bikes downhill yeah. you know i surf uh i paint whatever you know i write music and i play guitar you know have have hobbies have stuff you do outside of work because that's how you're going to live because one thing i've seen chris has seen it Ian, you've seen it just through you know doing this is um what happens to guys that have been in you know i want to fight i want to go to war they do it for 20 years what happens when the war stops or you can't do it anymore yeah. what happens then they you move- better have had that solid plan b 
You know, you better have other life goals because you cannot do this forever. You know, so it's. Well, look, I mean, look, look, look at both of us. I mean, both of us, uh, and I can say this now, both of us have metal appendages. I I mean, you know, yours for me, mine's just wear, mine's wear and tear, but that's Mm normal. I mean, that's, that's it. That's, that's the norm. You're, you're something on your body's probably going to be replaced at some point in time, whether it's by your, it's never going to be by your choice, but whether it's by combat or whether it's just by sheer freaking wear and tear yep. and, oh, and, yeah. and 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 that's but that's okay i always tell people that. I, and i was told to me by a ranger platoon sergeant who said if you do this job right you're gonna have new hips you're gonna have new knees you might get into might have a, something happen in combat he goes but oh. you did the job right and and that always stuck with me that was actually rothke that said that yeah to me. that sounds that sounds about that right that sounds rocky yeah yeah yeah, sounds like a Rockyism. Um, but mine is more leaning towards the mental side of it, you know, because when guys put their whole life in their, I'm getting there. Yeah, that's your personality, yeah, and that's what you identify as. You know, I I am an Army Ranger. I'm a Navy SEAL. I'm this, you know. And then when you stop doing that, there's times guys just go, you're right, and you know, it's yeah, that's a cool thing you did, but find joy in other things in life. Very awesome. true. So, well, I mean, and look at Leo. Leo, you know, Leo writes poetry. Jenkins, look at yeah. L- look at um Luke. Luke's a tremendous writer. Luke Ryan. Writer. Luke Ryan. Sorry, <laughs> There's just yeah. some audience knows you're talking about. I was like <laughs> Luke Ryan. I mean, even I mean, even Marty. Are they tremendous writers? Myself. That the the I think the biggest I, I my my hobby, which I, people are like, why the hell is that a hobby? My hobby was running. That's what I enjoy doing. Going for a jog, we we get done and, and shooting, time, right? I mean, well, it's, it's shooting. Shooting's a I, I shooting's a hobby, but you know, it's kind of a job job now for me too. But that is fun. No, I, I enjoy being outdoors and shooting. The outdoors is fun for me. But that was been hard recently, and I think maybe that's why I've had a harder time this year. Is that mm-hmm. one of those hobbies that I enjoyed is for the for the moment has been taken away from me which is running and it cleared my head and where art and painting sometimes clears guys heads where mm-hmm. matt matt going or you know fishing clears guys heads mine was just going and not running hard just going for a nice jog listening to the the birds listening yeah. feeling the breeze and and um but it, Matt's spot on. I, we all had different hobbies. And I think uh, I was never rangered out and a lot of guys he's right when guys get rangered out is when they when they have problems adjusting way later in life and they're usually divorced or they don't talk to their kids or, and, um, so no, you're, you're spot on brother. You're well, spot on with that. Even for you, Chris, you know, like, okay, you know, the running cleared your head and this is something, you know, that we learned through our training about flexing, you know, Hey, not like, Ooh, you know, but <laughs> you got to flex from <laughs> this, this yeah. path, you know, Hey, we're going to do this mission or we're going to assault this to, Hey, we got to flex. We got to go over here, go over here, be flexible. You know, you have to learn to roll the punches. Um, So even for you, I'd say be flexible and find another outlet. It's totally possible. You know, it is true. It's it's been and you're no, you're right. I I have been able to. I've been able to move and I still can do. I still can go to the gym. There's things I still can do where the gym to me is is a Zen place. It is very it is very spiritual uh, going to the gym where and. I just have had to adjust that workout. And then also I, I don't run, but I have a focus. I can go for a walk. I go, I'm, I'm an old man walking now. I'm like yeah. an old fucker. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, I love it. I like, cause holy shit. I can actually even hear more birds in, <laughs> in, and see things. Cause I'm, I'm not running. I'm, yeah. and it's, it did. It's so nice. It, it, yep. it really is. So I love going it, for walks. Man. Yeah. I, Matt, I, I do right around here, but yeah, it's true to just to adjust. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I, I really do want to get into what we're yeah. doing um, with you, what's going on this coming Saturday for people listening when this goes up on Tuesday. That's the main reason I, I invited you on, you know, love having you on, of course, but the fact that this is an important event that uh, we want people to get involved with if they're in the Georgia area. So um, yeah. this Saturday, when there's when this is airing, uh, September 14th, Homes for Our Troops is holding an event in, in Rinkin, Georgia. Am I saying it right? in Rinkin, Georgia, to help build Matt a smart home, um, which is at hfotusa.org slash waters with two T's and waters. I'm going to have all this all this in the description, so I don't expect you guys to write it down right now. Look at the description. You'll see it. Um, you know, so we talked about your incident a little bit. I, I'm mm-hmm. sure there's people who this is their first time hearing you on the show because there's always people 
um, you know, checking us out for the first time. I obviously don't expect you to go through the whole story again. If you guys want to hear that, go back to like episode 39 and we go through the whole incident. But as we implied here earlier, um, you lost your leg in combat. Yeah. You are in a home that you've been in for, I guess, about a year now. And yeah. um, th there are certain things that would really make your life a hell of a lot easier that they're helping you out with. So, yeah, I guess go back to just the, just a shorter synopsis of your story and um, where you are now and 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 why people need to help out and, and be a part of this event. Yeah. So, I mean, the short version is uh, I was a point man and I tried ninja kick in a uh, RPG. This is so awesome. Um, <laughs> I love fucking Matt. So he's never been, he's never changed. Dude. He's always been like, this is fucking awesome. That's motivating. All right. Sorry, dude. I, that, I did that. That caught me off guard. I was like, holy shit. That's fucking that's what I'm good for. <laughs> that's, no. All right. Go uh, ahead, bro. So yeah, they, uh, it's homes for our troops. And um, I don't think they call it a, a smart home necessarily. I know there's some other ones that do. They're just building a handicap accessible uh, um for folks and they can kind of i don't want to say it's modular but there's different things they can do in the home depending on how mobile you are in fact the uh the floor plan is pretty big uh because it's all slab you know there's no stairs which that's awesome because i mean just within the last year or no i guess not since i've been here but uh when we're at our other house when i lived an hour away from work as you know going downstairs and Okay. <laughs> especially when you're crutches and all of a sudden i'm in a pile at the bottom of the stairs you know and just looking up at the sky going <laughs> awesome this is how yeah. day it's gonna start um but yeah they can actually like for folks that are confined to a wheelchair or anything like that they actually have lifts um in the master bedroom that go from the bed to the bathroom for you know the toilet or the shower that type of thing um and then for the lift they even have a a, a generator that'll run the whole house you know so if you lose power that that lift will still work um so it's just really great uh like even here recently uh, i was in my wheelchair around the house and this is a beautiful home don't get me wrong um i'm very grateful to have it but you try taking laundry in a wheelchair and spinning in the in the hallway to turn around and you know the wheels are hitting this wall or you're hitting that door and you're scuffing stuff up and you know dropping the laundry basket or you know um running into stuff or when i'm on my crutches Another thing about the the home they're building for us that I'm really looking forward to is there's a sidewalk all the way around the house. I mean, this thing, I mean, they've thought of everything. Um, so you know, for people who don't know, which includes myself, actually, what's the reason you can't be on your prosthetic the way that you usually are? So for me, I mean, it's different for every amputee. Everyone has their struggles, you know. Um, for me, I mean, I just had surgery again because I had a... Uh, I don't know the technical term, but I had a spot that was um, filling up with blood and uh, just bad tissue. It wouldn't heal right. And every time I put it in my prosthetic, it would get aggravated and fill up with blood. So then I'm limping everywhere. And so is, it, is it an infection that could get serious? Is that what, or was it just, just a, like a, I don't know what, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, it's not something they have to go in there and you get antibiotics and it turns well, they, infectious. They it could put me on antibiotics because, you know, they cut me open. Um, gotcha. Really cool thing about it was, um, I went in for my x-ray. The x-ray showed no bone spurs, which I've had in the past, that aggravated tissue, and I had to have surgery for all of that. Um, when that came back negative, we went and got an MRI. There was no infection in the bone, but they could see fluid and uh, inflammation in that area. Um, so then when I went back for my um, uh, MRI review uh, results, uh, the doc was like, hey, I got a specialist here, you know, that he deals with this stuff. And he brought this guy in. He's like, oh, yeah, we could do this we could irrigate and debris it probably and we got to cut it open he goes i got time at two o'clock today you ready and i'll say let's go <laughs> yeah. so, it's awesome. the missus, ran home you know um told work i'm like i'm gonna be out um uh, yeah i went and got cut um uh, and i don't think it was a hematoma but it was something along those lines where it's just you know a bad spot filling up with blood and fluid and whatnot um Ow. yeah and that happens to me so for me, this is, you know, what this home would mean is um, this happens to me just about every three years. My last big surgery, I know I've stretched it out. Um, my last big surgery was 2019. Um, but it's something that I've dealt with since I've been an amputee. And it's something I'll deal with the rest of my life as my leg just not, you know, acting correctly. So you got to go under the knife. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the struggle, you know, of 
some days I can wear my leg and some days I can't, you know, thankfully I have a job now where I can still work, you know, before when I was a police officer, you got put on light duty. And, yeah. and you know, we spoke about it in the last episode, but for those who don't know, you're, you're in the firearms industry now. Yeah. Yeah. You're I still, for, you, you're Daniel, you're still a Daniel defense. Yep. Over there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, just uh, trying out for a new spot and hopefully find out here in the next week or two uh, to be up in the warranty department. So it's, you know, uh, helping to bring the guns in that need repair and then eventually turning wrenches on guns. Uh, so, uh, so you've been working as an armor as well. Have you got your armor license or do you just. Yeah. I'm, I, I went to uh, our course at DD, you know, for, uh, for our yeah. armor course. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I thought I knew a lot about ARs. Uh, and then yeah. I had a great end user knowledge, but you know, you come into a place like that and there's some folks there. Um, in fact, Michelle, um, she was another team lead that I work hand in hand with. Um, man, that girl can put together an AR and diagnose what's going on with it. I learned so much from her um, and some of the other folks on the production line. Like, yeah, like I said, I thought I knew a lot till I got there. And that's and that's a good. I always tell guys recommend you, if you maybe you're out you work firearms industry, you want go go learn to be an armor. I mean, I like yeah. that's fulfilling. I've heard a lot of veterans that go become armors, and that's extremely yep. fulfilling. And they've said the same things, whether it be. Oh. Uh, Glock armor or an AR armor, SIG armor. But so are they coming into your house and you, they're going to widen the hallways, widen the doorways? Are they doing all that or they just? No, what they do is they, you got to find land, which we did, you know, and they do it too. But uh, it's kind of on you to find the spot where you want. They'll find pieces of land here and there. And if it works, it works. But, you know, really the lion's share of the task is on you to find that land. Um, and then they, they got to, I mean, they go over it with a fine tooth comb, can't be in a flood zone, can't be, you know, over a certain percent grade. And then, um, when it fits the bill, they buy the land and then they build a home from scratch right there on that land for you. So that's what they're doing for us. Is there anything out of pocket for you or they take care of all of that? Everything. I mean, really, that's awesome. So, it is. you know, I mean, once, once we get the home, you know, the repairs and maintenance, that stuff's on you. Oh, you, you got to pay the taxes, right? You got to pay the taxes on it. Or they pay the taxes too. No, yeah, that's on you. That's on you. Okay. That's because, yeah. like, wow, are you going to pay the tax? No. Yeah, no, that's... no. Uh, Just like, <laughs> hey, you need a, a new uh, filter for your HVAC system. That's on you. That's you know? on you. Yeah. You got to cut your grass. That's on you. Yeah. Uh, so. Actually, I enjoy cutting grass. Maybe that's maybe that's the stereotype, no, the stereotype but, Mexican in me. I, I don't know the Latino. <laughs> I, I mean, that's it. But I enjoy there it. There will be there will be costs associated with that down the road. Like you know, we'll have to get a different mower. Um, sure. You know, I'd like to get. It's not a, a a need. It's a want. You know, I'd like to get a utility vehicle because there's five acres. You oh, know, wow. um, so I'd like to eventually Jeez. step up and get a utility vehicle. That type of stuff. But you know, that's on you. I mean, they give you this amazing gift you know this blessing and you know you just don't you don't let it go to hell you know it's on you to maintain it and yeah like i said i want to get a mower this that and the other that's on you so but, but the, yeah. i mean that's a house is a big especially nowadays how much houses costs and oh yeah I, uh, that, uh, I, that's huge of course everything i mean i why wouldn't if it wasn't on you on the rest of the stuff i mean that's way over the top i I wouldn't assume that they would be buying you all that other stuff, but no, once no. they get, once I, I mean, the house is, it's pretty, pretty freaking incredible, man. Yeah. How did you get, how did you get hooked up with these guys? So I don't remember. <laughs> there we go again. Man, you don't, <laughs> man, man, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> damn, don't no. remember shit. Uh, okay. I don't feel as bad now. I feel, I feel better. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So <laughs> there, there's a couple things about it. Like I think I'd heard about it and I'd started applying for it and you know us, it's like, why do I deserve that? You know, well, I, like, there, the, I don't, I don't deserve that. And that's not for me. You know, that's for somebody else. You know, I, I'll make my way. And I think I got like halfway through the application process. And then, um, Mora at homes for our troops actually called me and she's like, Hey, I see that you, uh, you didn't, uh, complete your application. I was like, yeah, you know, give it to focus on somebody else, you know, give the money to somebody else, this, that, and the other. And she goes, you know what? Every one of you says that. <laughs> all right you know and then i was still kind of hemming and hawing about it and a guy at work um at least i think it was this guy at work but it was uh steve miller when i was with tpd um i was telling him about it and he goes basically it's like what the fuck's wrong with you you know go you you deserve this and i was like no. you do, like, yes, you do. 
And I think at, the, at his prompting, I, I put in, I completed the package or, you know, completed the application. Sure, sure, so sure. You always have I mean, to have a friend, a friend that does that. I wasn't going to put anything in for my new hit. I, I, ben Morgan, my ranger, but, you know, Ben, first bat. He's like, what yeah. the fuck are you doing? He goes, go put in for disability for that. You got a whole piece of metal. Like I, I can still walk and shit. He goes, now go. So it's always <laughs> as you're it's got, I know as I'm going down the street like this. He's like, are you fucking retarded? Go, go put in for you. You deserve that disability. On you guys there. absolutely do, do and, uh, deserve it. And it's so it, funny because when you not funny, but when you look at like fun. the military budget and stuff like that, I mean, the military budget is is going towards truthfully like nuclear bombs that we're never going to use because if we did use them the uh the you know the world would completely blow up uh, with the amount of stuff that we have like th there should be more than enough to take care of you guys and uh, uh, unfortunately it, they don't use that money to take care of you guys so it's great there's organizations like this who who are doing it so definitely have to shout out them again which yeah. as i said the the uh the website is HFOTUSA, but it's Homes for Our Troops and seems like an amazing organization to donate yeah. to. Um, and just like, you know, we've had guys who have lost limbs on the podcast before, whether it's you or Michael Schlitz. And I know for Mike, um, it was the Gary Sinise Foundation. Yes. And um, I won't say the organization that I met Mike at that, you know, was supposed to build a home like that for him and didn't do it. And, and the Gary Sinise Foundation was who stepped up. So I was like, all right. I, you know, you hear stories like that. And it's like, I know they're a good organization. Because yeah, there up. are there are shady ones out there. Oh, yeah. And, and so it's it's nice to hear one that's actually fulfilling. And are you sitting in the house that they've they built? Is that the house right there that you're in? Or no. They're, they're... That, one's, that one's being built, like uh, Ian said, over in Rinkin. Rink, uh, I'm can, I'm sorry. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I my memory too. Did I forgot? I, <laughs> no, I so forgot. I forgot. It's, it's on that note, what's coming up is um, you know, on Saturday the 14th is what they call the community kickoff uh ceremony, and um, that's when um, you know, they they come into the community, they rent out a, a hall or you know, uh, you know, an event center, and they do a pretty good show, you know, of like bringing out the stuff that they build for the home, and you know, get a bird's eye view and interior views shots of the home and then basically they come in and say hey we're homes for our troops this is what we do you know this is matt this is what we're doing for him here's his story let him tell it so it's kind of uh, an introduction to the community of them and you um while they're building the home you know already um so there will be nothing to do with the home uh on saturday this is going to be just introduction to uh rinkin Georgia community of Homes for Our Troops and myself. And then down the road, they have the next ceremony, which is called the Volunteer Day. So basically the house is all the way up. And Volunteer Day means uh, folks come in, they lay sod for the lawn. They're pushing mulch around, laying mulch, you know, a little bit of landscaping. Um, they get to see the home from the outside. And then after that is the final ceremony, the key ceremony. Okay. And the key ceremony is, you know, that's the big to do. Basically, that's Hey, here they do all the introductions again. We're home for our troops. We're this is Matt. This is what we do. This is what we've done. Um, you know, a little bit more story, a little bit more pomp and circumstance. You know, I know like uh Quilt of Valor comes out. My mom was part of that. Oh, she yeah. already gave me a Quilt of Valor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they come out. Um, in fact, they did one for a veteran just in Florida. We went to go to his key ceremony and Quilt of Valor came out, gave him a quilt. Um so then, you know, at the conclusion of it, uh, they're like, hey, come in and check out the house. You know, I mean, we haven't moved in yet, so none of your stuff is in there. But, uh, you know, you, uh, everyone gets to come in and see the layout of the land and exactly what Homes for Our Troops does, you know, for veterans and, you know, what it can mean to these veterans that are, you know, um, really banged up. It's pretty, pretty cool. That is, are you going to be able, I know you don't like the spotlight, but I do know you do speaking yeah. and, and you, you have and you're good at it. Um, but are you going to, you going to be able to do it? I mean, you, you're going to, you're going to be the focal point, but and I yeah. know you, obviously people that they don't, you don't like that. Yeah. I've already accepted that, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like that is not my jam, you know, being the center of attention. And it's funny. I'm the same way as much as people assume doing a podcast, but to me, this is like so personal, but right. yeah, when you're in front of a group of all these people, I, yeah, it's not, not my thing. I, I get it. Yeah. And you know, I don't like making things about me like that, but honestly, that is exactly the reason you know this is about sure. me that's you know my day type thing but i've also in my head i'm like 
you know, I need to be a good steward of Homes for Our Troops and, you know, let's do this so I can bring more awareness to Homes for Our Troops because of their mission and what they do is so amazing. So I have no problems getting up. <laughs> yeah, not my favorite thing to do, but, you know, I got no problems standing up and getting in front of them and saying, hey, this yeah. is what Homes for Our Troops has done for me and how amazing it is and really talking them up, you know, so it just brings more awareness to them. And I'm cool with that. And, and you're, you're, you're going to inspire you're people too, man, because... Uh, there's going to be people watching you who, uh, you know how it is. Everybody is in their own little bubble. People get stuck on, uh, you know, that their, their Frappuccino was made wrong that day. And I think they'll see someone like you and, and, you know, it, it puts things into perspective for, for real of what real problems are and, oh. and, and the perseverance you've shown. Yeah. I, yeah, and I, 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 I hope, I, I hope that those like yourself that said, uh, no, 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 I don't need it. Not for me that they actually, that's it motivates them to step up and say, Hey, can you help me? And, um, right. or at least, or a buddy like your TPD buddy, like Ben did with me. Hey dude, you're an idiot. You deserve this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or maybe even does the application for uh, buddies do that. Sneaks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I know oh, folks have done that, you know, for yeah. um, like Gary Sinise and all that, you know, they put folks in for that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, are you uh, that the house you're at now? Is that the one that has the beauty? You had a beautiful pond. Is is that the one you're at now? No. Oh man, you know whose house that was? Whose was that? John Preston. Oh, what? Yeah. Uh, no way. Yeah. Damn. So when we moved to Georgia, um, our plan kind of fell apart when we were in route. And I mean, this is you mean well, you when well, you stayed at my house. Because you stopped at my place, right? And you did you the plan fell apart when you were like, or even when you got beyond Fort Scott and you went. No, it was before that. Um, so oh, we wow. were moving. We're moving down. We're going to move in with somebody, you know. And that plan, I won't. You know, I'm not going to name names or anything like that because I've moved on. You know, it's like a, uh, you know, that was God's way of saying not today. Yeah. You know, and or you're, you're going to struggle and then you're going to learn something from this. So. I've moved on from that. I'm a okay with it. Uh, because honestly, it's, it's been an amazing adventure. Um, yeah, it got tough. You know, what I really struggle with is how it affected my daughter, you know, leaving Washington, um, sure. having things up in the air like that. But then this is where, you know, I talk about the community, like you, like, dude, I texted you and I'm like, Hey, can we're on the way, you know, can we stay at your place? I want to come visit. You're like, Hey, we won't be there, but uh, here's the code. Here's the code. Get in, man. Yeah. We, hey, uh, sorry if it's, yeah. just, we got shit everywhere. We just, cause I just had moved I in didn't. too. And, and, uh, uh, well, uh, for the, the, my OCD, I felt like I had shit everywhere. You didn't. But, you didn't. But, yeah. Yeah. That, no, I, I was like, yeah, fuck so yeah. Here's, was... here's the code, man. Stay as long as you want. Yeah. So that was, that pond was John Presley's property. And when uh, he found out that, you know, our plans had fallen through because we were going to Georgia anyway. Um, when he found out our plans fell through, he's like, Hey, I'm living in Texas. He goes, I have a house that I'm not living at. And I'd prefer you do because then, you know, it keeps the lights on, keeps, yeah. you know, dust out and, you know, keeps it all well oiled. The set and other goes, you will live there. And um, he goes, you will live there free just pay the utilities that you use. And we're like, okay. You know, so that's that wow. Presley's property out there. And that was, I tell you what, if I had nothing to do and just sit out there, that was glorious, but it you know, was, that was a beautiful picture, dude. I, that picture's yeah. like, wow, man, that's uh, just, just, I was a man on the move and I needed a job and I needed to figure stuff out. We needed a home. So it, def it definitely wasn't a restful time, <laughs> but that was a nice place to go and sit and just, you know, let your worries go yeah. for the day. Yeah, that was cool. Presley, man, he wasn't even tab when I was, I was that like a private man. Yeah. And he's now, what does he have? Was he like a multi? It's like eight houses. What? what no, is he? So that's that's the family <laughs> property. Um, okay. And yeah, he's built a house out there. Um, you know, that's where he still lives, but he's built a house out there. He's married. Uh, he retired you know, several years ago. Yeah. I still remember him being just a total jack off. <laughs> as an untapped private man just a good i mean great guy but just a goo it's like he looked to get smoked he's like those one of those guys that wanted to get smoked because he just was such a goof yeah that's but awesome can, but can he could back it up yeah yeah no he was no he's he was great that's that he was a he was a good per, ranger private just yep. yeah bring it on hey man bring it on hey, man suck, i want to suck more bring more yep. I, I i haven't heard that name in years yeah. and I, yeah he, but that's just uh, uh um 
a tribute to, you know, or a nod to the community where it's like, Hey, you're in trouble. I, I got a place for you to land, you know, or I, I got a helping hand or whatever it is, you know? So that's just, it's an amazing community. That is another thing, you know, that I tell some folks, you know, or some kids that are thinking about joining. I was like, it's an amazing community. If you do it right, you know, um, it's an amazing community to be a part of because you'll find no one closer. No, you're, you're, you're right, bro. Well, I'm glad you're doing, I mean, because you've been at Daniel Defense now for uh, two years, at least. Yep. I, this month. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was one thing I'm glad you're like, you're, you're off your like off your feet and you're getting in a place where you can be comfortable and and you're accepting yeah. just like just like I am we're accepting our age and our and yeah. our injuries and our and it's okay man just to just fire like you said be flexible Absolutely. but and that's and that's the best way to do it and it is a saying god god's saying hey dude just it's time to chill man just right. just really just I'm gonna lead you down another path. yeah yeah and yep. it, it's it's wonder it's wonderful but um yeah, bro. You with that? You got Daniel Fitz. What else is coming up? The house is coming up. We got the yeah. event, but you know anything else on the horizon for you? No, man. Oh well, you know what? Uh, minor thing. Just going back for the fiftieth anniversary for two seven five at the end of uh, uh, the month here. That's right. It is coming yeah. up, isn't it? Yeah. And that, and but personally, no, man. I mean, my goal right now is uh, you know get into that home uh, start taking care of that home and you know we want to do a garden and fruit trees and chickens you know so that that's nice. that's going to be a whole thing you know that's going to be a full-time uh fun yeah. thing to do because it's getting outside working with my hands um and then just you know keeping keep kicking ass at work and bringing a good name to dana defense and myself you know um yeah just keep plugging away and keep working hard at work i mean yeah. I'm, I'm i'm so happy right now i mean everything you know, not to be challenged, but knock on wood, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at, man. That's Very good. awesome. Nah, that's I, awesome. I actually, I got one more question, yeah. uh, strictly for the clickbait aspect, you know, cause you, it's funny, um, D who produces the team house, uh, when I was over at their studio, we were talking about things that end up like doing good for videos. He was like, this is what always did. And I was just thinking about, you'd be the person to ask this, that people always love to click on, um, you know, you're an army ranger. You're a former police officer. You're a guy who works in firearms. So you are definitely the person to ask, what is your everyday carry? Um, yeah, what are your favorite firearms? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> it, <huh? laughs> and also, what did you carry overseas? All of that would be cool. Yeah, well, no, that was your standard M4, your Colt M4 rifle. Um, you know, I do have a few DDs at the house now. Um, you know, being there, you get a good discount. So I got a couple of their rifles that... I've absolutely fell in love with, you know, I mean, it's the same platform, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's like being home. Uh, but for my everyday carry, um, just from being on the police force, I, I got a Glock 19, yeah, you know, with a, a, a red dot sight on it, you know, uh, not a full size, obviously, but enough to, you know, throw under my shirt, but that's my everyday carry, you know, um, so you don't mess with all this custom, super high, uh, ex very expensive, uh, stuff out there. No. I mean, you can go out and buy the most expensive gun. And I've got on some of my buddies about this. You know, you can go out there and buy the most expensive gun. But if you don't have ammo to shoot it, what good are you doing? I know. Um, you can't you know, I mean, honestly, from police work, I've seen I've seen people killed with 22s, 380s, 12 gauge shotguns. You know, the the thing is, is like people will say, what's the best gun for me to get? And I'm like, whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever yeah. you're most comfortable with pulling up and getting sights on target and getting sights on target, uh, accurately. Um, you know, it's what you put holes in somebody, no matter what size it is, they're going to stop doing whatever activity they were just doing. You know, yeah. um, people oh, 45, 40, nine millimeter, this, that, or the other, you put holes in people, they're not going to be happy. You know? <laughs> so I just tell people, I'm like, whatever you're most comfortable with carrying, you know, and getting accurate rounds on target, that's the one for you. That's and that's the that's that's a ranger mindset. Uh, Sean asked me that question on the show at the beginning because what do you carry? I said, well, I got nine mil. I, you know, I don't, but I'll carry whatever you give me. I don't care, ten millimeter, forty five. It's like, well, what? I why nine or why forty five? Well, nine years because it's least expensive out of everything right. I can carry. Yeah. I get a little bit more bang bang for my buck. Yeah, but, like, but, but I block like, because i carried it for 18 years and it's like you know? it's, it's like cheap I, I and i i've said it on the show and i don't care if they hate me or not i have a staccato i have a yeah uh, i have two of them 
best gun I ever had coming out of the box after yeah. 3000 rounds. It's the worst gun I've ever had because <laughs> it does it doesn't want to run now. We're a Glock five, six, seven thousand. And I have I have one that I've had for years. I'm probably about six, seven thousand rounds. 19 Glock 19 still just yeah. still just driving away. And no I'm just that's all. what I carried for 18 years, you know, the the Glock style, you know, whether it was a 17, a 21, or a 22, you know, and now, you know, the 19 I've had for a long time. It's just familiar. And I don't I don't feel like learning a new weapon system. You know, I mean, maybe that's the old dog, new tricks type thing, but that's what I'm comfortable with. That's what I'll carry. Yeah. I think that's just the mindset is hey, yeah. whatever you get, whatever you give me, I just give it to yeah. me. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. And yeah, and that's, that's, that's it. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm same way. What well, good. We need to start doing that at the end of all our shows. Like, uh, maybe uh, probably Gordon Chang. Gordon that Chang, been yes. a great question <laughs> for Gordon Chang. But now, bro, it's it's it always is true. Good people to have want, people too, can't man. get yeah. enough of that. Like one of our videos is is uh, I think it's at like eleven thousand views now, and it's just you. Uh, well, it's not everyday carry. It's oh, it's firearm of choice with you. But I think yeah, if we do it with with uh, spec ops veterans, people love that shit. They can't get enough of that. Uh, and yeah. I bet there'll ever be a we'll have more Glocks than anything. More Glocks, maybe some Sigs. Since yeah. Sigs Sigs the new thing now, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm I with you. I don't want to get shot with a SIG any more than I do a Glock. I, I or, know. Or, you know, whatever yeah. else. Well, I don't want to get shot with those. Remember those? Two, I have one, the old trainer 22s where you pull the, yeah. it's got, it's also, it's it got a, it's the round, round upper and you just mm -hmm. pull. That's going to hurt just as, just as bad. I still have one of those damn. Yeah. And, and you definitely don't want to get shot with any ammo from Fort Scott. Munition. Oh yeah. There that's, we go. I got to throw it in there. there. Yeah, there plug in. Um, I oh, hey, hey, were, were you able to, uh, I know you were looking for, what was it? Did they ran out and there was, you needed some and I forgot to, I forgot. To I don't remember. It. I think the last time we were talking, it was either five, five, six or three Oh eight. Um, and but then, I have, I haven't bought any in a minute and I probably should. So, uh, well, they got plenty now with ammo's, plentiful again it's just like it's like a harvest man you get droughts and then it's plentiful they're they're all plentiful but uh yeah brother um yeah that's all that's all i got it's just it's always good to talk to you and, and um and get your take and your your take on life it, it really is you're, you're very positive but you've always even before you're even before the combat man you're always one of the positive guys that was always you can do it smiling smiling as you oh. scuffed us smiling as he scuffed us up but a good smile <laughs> not the not the evil smile that we'd get from like Leonard, which was he. he I love Leonard, but he, the dude was evil. Leonard was evil as shit, but I liked Leonard. I did, I did. But Maddie was like, "There's Sergeant Waters. All right, man. I think the scuffing's gonna end. He's coming up. <laughs> He's coming up. <laughs> the one of the good ones is coming up." So, it, it, and and it did. It's just always great talking. And, and you're you, you've you've kept that positivity. I have out. my I have my moments. We all do. I, I, I'm with you. Well, that's I, also I, what I, I think it. people gravitate to is the honesty. You know, yeah. the uh, <clears throat> it's it's funny because not not to call him out, um, but it's maybe maybe he's telling the truth. But you know, I do follow a lot of uh, veterans on Instagram on our page just because that's what we do. And I've seen uh, Dakota Meyer put up one thing a while back where he said uh, he's like, I don't have bad days ever. He's like, I have bad moments here and there, but I never have a bad day. And I'm like, really? I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. We all have bad days. Everybody has a bad day. Yeah. 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 I mean, I kind of see where he's going with that, you know, but it's also like, um, like the whole mindset thing. Like, like yeah, don't yeah. let a bad moment ruin your day. Sure. You know? Which is, I'm which kidding. is the way to do it. Yeah. And don't, you know, it's funny. People will say this is corny, but I've heard it from Joel Osteen. And I think there's a lot of wisdom from that guy. And it's, um, don't let anyone steal your joy. Yeah. And he talked about how, and I've adopted this into my life. If someone is rude to you, who's, I don't know, you know, that, that, uh, you're buying <laughs> something, which happens to all of us. I think like the reaction is to be like, what the fuck is your problem, man? Yeah. And it's gonna it's gonna screw up your day. It's gonna bring your anxiety up. He's like, if anything, I go super nice with them. I I'm over the top friendly. And I, you know, as much as people criticize that guy, I think he actually does live a really positive life because of that mindset. And I really, um, I and Chris actually thinks like this too. I I've, I've gotten better with it. Like I small things like that. I try not to let steal my entire day you know and then people talk about it man i ran into this guy and he was such an asshole but and then you're still talking about it and it's continuing to ruin your day they're not and even I thinking think, about you anymore yeah 
you got to move on from stuff like that people like that that's a them problem not a you problem yeah i i'll be quite honest man i do the happiness thing but there are some times where it's the happy you know how it is the happiness is like Hey, dude, thank you so much. But you're really saying, hey, man, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I, I have to be honest with you. I And I, I, that sometimes it's that way. It's it's the happiness is 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 just a and, and you have that tone where you're actually saying that. So we're right. not we're being, after that. No, I mean, I let it go. It's it's gone. Right. It's, it's 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 done. I, if I, you I, had a negative response and you let someone have it, you'd. Yeah, it. you're right. if, if, even if you're condescending with a smile. I still don't remember it because I'm right. small, but if, but if I am angry, I'm like that mother. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're bad. Right in your head after that. Look at, look at Sergeant Waters, big Sarge school in the young private all over again. Did it right. twice today. Had two epiphanies with him. He just uh, keeps doing it. I'm a guru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey bro. Well, if you need anything, man, you know, my, my doors are always open and I, right. I do, I gotta Same. come visit here. I get down to Georgia and, and visit, yeah. visit, um, Rink uh, is it's rink. Where is it? Rincon? Rinkin. Yeah. Rinkin. Rinkin. Um, where is that? If you don't mind. Um. So it is about, it's 30 minutes ish West of Savannah. Um. Oh, only. Wow. Oh, probably 15 minutes from the South Carolina border. So pretty close there. Um, oh, that's God. Beautiful. Yeah. I bet it that's is. Just it's gorgeous. absolutely gorgeous out here. And you know, to both of you, you guys are ever down in this area, please. You guys always have a room. Please get a hold of us, you know, let us know. Thank yeah, you, man. I really will if I'm ever there. You know, yeah. if I ever do move to Florida, which I want to, it would be on the way there. Absolutely. You, know? you got, you got so, a place to crash, man. I, I really appreciate it. And I will take you up on that if it does happen. Um, Man, so many people come on the show, say this and and really do mean it. Like for a while now, Chris Dykos, if you're ever here, we got to catch a Kraken game. Like, you know, and he has season tickets. So, uh, you know, I just don't don't travel as much, but it it, it would be cool. And I would love to meet in yeah. person because you are an inspiring guy, truly. And that's why I love having Thank you me. on. So I've had you on four times Um, at Hop Along Waters on Instagram. Once again, two T's in Waters. And if you are anywhere near Rinkin, Georgia, please come out to this event. Say hi to Matt. Say that you know Matt from the show. Um, Saturday, September 14th, 9.30 a.m., at Effingham uh, College and Career Academy in Rinkin, Georgia. Uh, all the information will be in the description of the site. That's hfotusa.org slash waters. Once again, with two T's and waters. Uh, this has been great, man. I know we've been kind of all over the place, but that's the main thing we want to get out there. Um, if you could make the drive out, help Matt. Um, and <clears throat> and as, as all of us said, like, truly, you are a guy who is very, very deserving of this. And um, thank you. I, it, it'll be great to see you, you know, your yeah. life be a little bit easier, quite honestly. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it will. It will be, you know, that, that'll be one heck of a blessing. So I really appreciate all that. Those are kind words. I appreciate um, could I, could I make a note it. that has nothing to do with any of this? Um, yeah. You know, I usually have this window shut. If you guys see, I'm going to say it right now. If you guys see the gay pride flag waving outside my window, <laughs> that is not me. That is my landlord. <laughs> but, but I, okay. but you know what's funny? Yeah. I know someone in the comments is going to be like, I knew this guy was gay. Well, <laughs> well, you know what, like, it's my landlords who are, who are awesome. Just, Every, usually this thing is closed and now I'm looking at it. it and I'm I like, can't... someone is some smart ass is going to point this Maddie, out. So. Maddie's going to have it in his yard in Georgia, man. He's going to have the Gatson flag and then the gay pride flag. <laughs> right? That's how it's going. Yep, it's, 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 I will say there, it's very covered. funny. Sometimes I leave the house and I feel like, like the Amazon package guys are looking at me kind of weird. <laughs> and, but it's like, yeah, it's my landlord's. It's, it's not me, but yeah, not, there's, kinda, not, there's anything wrong with that. You know, you kind of just owned yourself because <laughs> I did see a flag wave in the background, but I didn't pay any attention to it. So yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm making it a point to, I wouldn't I, have known that's what it was until you just said something. So you just owned yourself, man. I, I thought, I thought you saw it and you were, didn't have the balls to say anything, which really I would have been completely disappointed. My whole, my whole thought process of you it would have just been shattered, dude. I mean, like, oh my okay. gosh, I can't believe it. Because you never you let that go. It. Well, I he's told me. I'm. I'm this is yeah. a podcast. I. I was like, <laughs> I've already made fun of it once. I can't. I mean, that's like going back to the well. That's like that's like <laughs> that's like liberals claiming racism all the time. I mean, it's just low hanging fruit. I can't do it, man. I can't. It's uh, just like, I do it once. We're, but it's interesting it, though, <laughs> living on Long Island. It's like all over the place because I walk you know, this block and there's people with like the Marine Corps flag. There's people with the, you know, Gadsden flag, a lot of American flags, and then come here, gay flag. It's, 
So a lot of people kind of just get along with each other. And you know what I've noticed? Uh, and this is like totally off topic too, but uh, I don't know what it is. Like where I live, it's way less yard signs of who you're voting for. I think people just kind of get along here and there's like, I don't see a lot of Trump signs or Kamala signs. And I don't think anyone cares. I kind of prefer that, but maybe that's me. No, I mean, it's, I actually had this conversation with a buddy on Instagram, you know, cause we we're talking about the old days of don't ask, don't tell. And yeah, you know, kind of miss that because it's like, Hey, can you do your job? Fucking yeah. right on. Yay. Exactly. Let's go kill shit. You know, and what you do on your own time, that's what you do on your own time. Yeah. But yeah. can you do your job and pull your weight? Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. We, we never, I mean, we, there, always the fraternity we'd have the fraternity jokes the locker room jokes it's just oh yeah but but nobody gave a shit you're right nobody gave two shits if unless you were a shit bag and then if you're a shit bag we i didn't care if you're red black yellow green you right. like to puff on peters or you like to eat vertical taco <laughs> i didn't give two shits you do your job that's let's do it yep. but yeah now that's 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 an issue that's well i, I can't even imagine I mean, I would like to spend a day as a fly in the wall now at regiment just to see what it's what it, or even go through like at rasp and just see. I don't do you think in Ranger Regiment, though, it would be that much different? I don't think it's much different than what we're Chris and I are talking about. I think the attitudes are the same. I, I honestly think they're making a better Ranger, a way better Ranger now than when I was. Well, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what Max think, Mullen said when he was on. Yeah. I think the mindset is still the same. Mindset same, but you're you're prepared. You're you're not going with three weeks of getting scuffed up and going. I don't know, have a clue what I. Oh yeah. <laughs> where am I supposed to run? I knew I was tough enough shot. to make it because I just got my ass kicked for three <laughs> weeks. But you know, and this is credit to the regiment, you know, for going and making it eight weeks long and yeah. sprinkling some of that in. But then they're making a more professional ranger so that when they deploy immediately to combat, these guys know what they're doing. Yeah, the battalions had to teach us. Like we were day one privates because we were. Yeah. Now you're you're right. You're right yeah. on there, brother. I I forgot that you are an X too, right? Are you on X or on Twitter? Uh, yeah, yeah, Is but it? I'm not. I mean, I am, but I'm not on there very much. Okay, because I, I followed <laughs> uh, Matt Waters, Sergeant Waters, so I'm just hoping it was you and not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Do you want to give that out, or it's up to you? Uh. I I don't even you know what I don't even know what my handle is for Twitter. That's right. Well, sh shocker, he doesn't remember. I, that's pretty much a theme. <laughs> that's the theme of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Matt Waters doesn't I remember. I know. I well, hey, but I, yeah, I I know Mama's waiting waiting on you out there. So I don't, I don't want to keep you in. But um, yeah, brother. Anytime you got something put out too, you just let us know and and we'll we'll have you on again. Hey, so the the Twitter handle <laughs> you'll love this. It's Zonk two seven five. No shit. Is there? Is that really? Is yeah. that you? Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. All right. Now we got to keep them on. We'll tell everybody what Zonk means. That doesn't because we don't we don't have all military yeah, people. Zonk, on uh, so normally, I mean, the battalion or you know higher PT is if you get zonked. You know, that's usually like the battalion commander, regimental commander. He yells zonk and everybody just breaks ranks in every direction back towards the company, screaming at the top of their lungs. Um, and then, yeah, you just get the the hell out of Dodge. So. <laughs> it means no and no PT and the guys that are in the barracks are going back to bed. The guys that aren't either probably going to Burger King down the way or yeah. going to going to lay on the floor. Oh, the squad. No, Hawks Prairie down there in uh, Lacey. Oh, that's right. Holy Fox Prairie used to be the jam. Man, that was the place, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Zonks were great. I think I, I only remember two of them. Ah, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Was, all right, Zonk. Zonk yeah. guru. Guru. Now I yell Zonk. I'm the only one running away. It's weird. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, all right. Well, I'm I'm good, man. I, I mean, I, I could keep going. I just don't want to yeah. keep going. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is good. Th thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate it as always. Absolutely, guys. That's all for this episode of Battleline Podcast. But we're always posting new content on social media. Follow us on Instagram at Battleline Podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. That's an order. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes up every Tuesday. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Believe in yourself. Face all challenges head on. And as always, never quit.